So in this example, let's just follow this one step by step, eh? So first one, I'll even mark down the steps for you. Replace f of x with y, or whatever your function, g of x, h of x, q of x, could be anything. Easy enough, right? I know some people get stuck on this, and I say, all right, let's do step one. Step number one. Step number two, swap the x and y's. Why do we swap the x and y's? Don't worry, just do it. We'll explain later. I just want you to practice the process right now. Basically, I'm just telling you what to do. We're just going to follow it. And then we'll make conceptual understanding after we do a couple problems. Oh, by the way, the question is, find the domain and range. Crap. The question is, find the domain and range of the function. Do we know what the domain is of this function? Yeah. Da, 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 da. All well, real all real numbers. Why? Because again, remember the restrictions, the implied domain is all real numbers except for our two restrictions. Our restrictions, you can't divide by 0, or you can't take the square root of a negative number. Is it possible for us to divide by 0 by a value that's going to make it 0? No, there's no fraction there, right? Well, I mean, there's a fraction 2 thirds, but there's no x in the denominator. Is there any square roots? So we're not taking the square root of any negative numbers. So our domain, negative infinity to infinity, right? All real numbers, but just getting practice writing interval notation. OK. Um, so now we did step number two. Now we do step number three. We start solving. Add one, add one. x plus one equals 2 thirds y. How do we get rid of a fraction? You can always multiply by the reciprocal. Make sure, though, when you're multiplying the reciprocal on both sides, you have to multiply this whole expression by the reciprocal. So make sure you put that in parentheses. Any number multiplied by a reciprocal multiplies to 1. Um, you could also apply a distributive property here to kind of make the problem a little bit easier. So we have 3 halves x plus 3 halves equals y. For my fourth and final step, I'm going to swap those over. And then I'm going to replace y with f inverse. OK? All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We got to find the, the range. Remember, the range of f of x is the domain of f inverse. Ah, crap. So what's the inverse here? What's the inverse? Or what's the domain? Sorry. All real numbers. So the range 